All right, here we go. Yeah, man. That's really funny that we're in, in uh, our team shirts. It really is. Morning, everybody. Morning. Hey, hey, good morning. Look at all these great faces. All right, Louie's in the house. Welcome, Louie. Hey, Dustin. Hi, Mary. Everybody. Hi. Happy Saturday morning. Happy Saturday morning. All right. Tara, good to see you. I miss you guys. Miss you too. Had a great happy time. Holiday. Yeah, happy new excited, year. Excited to get to see you some more after bowl. Yeah. Yeah. We are uh, so excited to uh oh there's there's KJ. Cage has got a bunch of folks joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll get everybody in here, get going on this beautiful Saturday morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. We are so excited that everybody's here and that you guys are jumping in with us on this. That's really cool. The uh, uh, we're gonna give up everybody a, a second to get in here, and uh, and then we're gonna go over some uh, some fun stuff, a little bit about uh, me and Luke, so you guys know what we're doing, why we're doing it. But uh, first first week's always a challenge. Now we've also got this on Facebook Live, so that um, so that anybody a uh, can't make it or doesn't come on the Zoom and wants to do Facebook, that's fine. Also, um, if it's recorded, so it'll be sitting on the Facebook community group, okay? Uh, lastly, we also know that there we have quite a few people that are joining our community that aren't on Facebook in general. So we're going to ask all of you guys for patience and bear with us because we're going to email a recording out on Monday of the, these calls to everybody. And we just frankly do not have the bandwidth to separate out who's able to get on Facebook and who's not. So we're just going to we're not trying to spam you. We're just going to send everybody a recording of this every Monday so that, that you have it. Okay. So, uh, so please just bear with us on, we may be sending you a couple, uh, uh, too few, too, too many emails to start out with. The other thing is um, we have submitted everybody to when they give, we still got some folks, uh, including members of our team that signed up and still haven't gotten the emails. And we've even signed them up several times on the when they give website. So we're also, CJ on our team is forwarding those dropped emails so everybody gets those as well. So we just want to make sure everybody gets the podcast, everybody gets uh, the uh, the manuals and the recordings uh, any way, the best way we can. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so welcome to Wealth, uh, wealth Building. Uh, I'm your co-host, Chris Papillardo. I've got my uh, my partner in crime, uh, Luke Vanda with me. Luke, say hi, so you're on the Hello. Hey, everybody. Yeah. So ironically, we didn't talk about it. We're both wearing our uh, team shirts. These are Chrisisms uh, on our team. They uh, they like Chrisisms, so we have um, <laughs> made Chrisisms. They made them into t-shirts. So I'm wearing my uh, "Leave Everybody Better Than You Found Them," and uh, we didn't talk about it. And we're we're dressed the same. So good for that. Uh, uh, want to address a couple things and then we'll get started. Uh, a little bit about me, because some of you may know Luke, some of you may know me, maybe some of you know friends of friends, you don't know us at all. Uh, again, my name is Chris Papillardo. I live in Greensboro, North Carolina, and um, I am very, very passionate about learning how money works. I was not taught that as a kid. Uh, I was given a, a, a very incomplete statement uh, growing up. Just work hard and you'll be okay. You work hard. And you'll be okay. And uh, I worked really, really hard. Um, those of you who know me, I work hard. And when I hit 38 years old, fairly cocky, 
I would I was making great money uh, selling uh, stuff, and um, I I had the lovely world of 2008 happen, and I was got myself bankrupt. I'm a frugal person. I don't spend a lot of money, and despite all that, I was bankrupt. Um, and my entire world changed upside down. Starting over at 39 years old with nothing was not fun and enjoyable. However, I wouldn't change a thing because I then met the love of my life, Amy. Uh, and um, she married a bankrupt person. Uh, I got into real estate in 2010. And I put the first year of real estate uh, on Amy's credit cards. She had never had debt until she met me. Uh, thank you, wife. So she put my first year of real estate on her credit cards and I went into working hard again and we did really, really well. And um, I've been talking about passive income and, and financial freedom my entire adult life and had, had never come close to achieving it. Even with a successful real estate team and everything in 2007, we, uh, 2017, we finally got our first uh, rental property simply because we bought the house we're in now, we made our first home a rental had not cracked the code and we sell real estate for a living. Um, and what happened later was in 2019, my real estate coach, Jake Ginger, challenged me and Amy to get purposeful about it. So, uh, and started analyzing investment properties. Just start analyzing, them. just start down the path, just do something, right? Just to get towards that. I've been talking about it, just do it. And uh, between 2020 and 2022, and just by focusing two hours a week, Amy and I now went from having one investment property to 11. And we're about to have our 12th. And, uh, and it was, what was interesting was that was in this crazy market of insanity and buyers, you know, can't find houses, deals. I still found deals. Luke will tell you his story in a minute. He still found deals in the past two years, like really great deals. Um, so they can be found anywhere. Uh, we work at Keller Williams and one of the things we were told years ago, which I want to just make sure you guys hear this, we want to cheer to you is that I was always told that you are no more than five years from wherever you want to be. Five years. Everybody grossly overestimates what they get, can do in one year, grossly overestimates what they can do in one year and grossly underestimates what they can get done in five. And we have found that to be very, very true. I'm going to tee that up for Luke and his story in a second, because his five years with us has been remarkable. And um, so just in the past two years, going to year three of Amy and I getting purposeful about financial freedom, our, our, our trajectory has changed drastically. Uh, surprisingly, in, during COVID in 2020, I took the Wealth Series for the first time. Luke took the Wealth Series for the first time. Neither one of us told each other about it. Neither one of us knew each other would take it. And um, it has been just a godsend. So when we, we, and both of us knew that when the new one came out, we wanted to share that with a lot of people. So, uh, so, and we didn't know that. And it was just talking about it and all of a sudden. So here we are co-hosting it together because of our passion. Um, I have gotten this question a few times. So I want to address it up front because uh, the people who don't know me uh, have, have asked me politely. They said, well, Chris, uh, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this for free? Like, why are you, doing all that. And, I, and, and my simple short answer is, um, uh, it's, it's not altruistic. It feels really great helping other people. It just feels fantastic to lead people better than I found them. And um, if we can help you guys create legacies and learn from our mistakes and get there faster for you and your kids, because we're not taught how, to, how money works and we're not taught how to get financial freedom. Uh, I'll blow your mind with the things I learned about taxes, just taxes and, and all these things. And uh, so if, if we can leave here after eight weeks and you guys have a better idea on how to feel financially free or be on the path to it, uh, man, that's just that's worth its weight in gold for us. And it's really that that simple. Um, that's it. Just just share and make sure you share everything you're learning here with anybody. They are welcome anytime. That's why on our group, we've said, period, no selling. No, this is no promotion. This is just about helping each other grow and learn and get better, okay? So that's my story uh, in a nutshell. Luke, I'll let you explain uh, why you're here and what you do. Yeah. Yeah, guys, it's good to uh, good to see all you guys. I look forward to 
to get to know you, know you all a little better, for those of you I don't know. Yeah, so short version of my story. So I grew up in uh, Saxby Hall, North Carolina. I was born in the South, but it didn't take. Um, more cows than people in my hometown. Um, and uh, I now live in Greensboro. I've been in Greensboro off and on uh, for over a decade, over the last 15 years or so. And uh, 2016, um, in the fall of 2016, I had a four-month-old uh, baby. And uh, what I like to tell people is I lost my corporate sponsorship, uh, i.e. I got laid off. And uh, <clears throat> my wife and I decided we were going to relocate from uh, a little small town we were living in just northwest of Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, sold our house. We had the proceeds for our house. Uh, at that point, a seven-month-old baby uh, and no idea what we were going to do. So we uh, moved up. I had gotten into real estate in, uh, in that spring of 2016. So I've been here uh, in, in Greensboro again since 2017 and uh, married to Shannon, who I think is on this call. And I've got three wonderful kids, uh, Winston, Evelyn, and Owen. So if we're here on um, Saturday mornings and you see some dark circles under the eyes, it's probably because uh, my four-year-old especially has been having a lot of bad dreams lately. So she's been coming at 2.30 in the morning. Um, but yeah, I, I echo everything that Chris said. I took the Wealth Series uh, the first time in 2020 in the middle of massive uncertainty. Um, and uh, the, the, the concepts that were in that just radically changed the way I thought about about wealth and finances uh, and and really about leaving a legacy um, with uh, with with my finances. Um, so I'm really excited to pass uh, pass on whatever uh, <laughs> whatever wisdom we can pass on from that. I'm super excited to do that. Um, a little bit about kind of since I've uh, come on uh, come back to Greensboro in 2017. Uh, when we moved back, um, our net worth. Uh, which we'll talk about here in a couple of weeks, uh, was in the negative. Uh, so for some of you, and I've already had some people reach out to me and say like, hey, I'm starting to do some of these activities and it's getting a little stressful. Like, uh, I don't know if I like what I'm seeing. Um, if that's you, just know I've been there and uh, I can truly empathize with you on that. Um, but net, net worth was in the negative. And, you know, looking at that and, and staring at it and seeing what the reality was, you know, episode two, if you've listened to that already, it's called Reality Check, right? And it, it was... Uh, it was good to see, hey, here's where we're at. Because uh, if you know where you're at, you can make a plan for where you want to get to. Um, so over the last five years, you know, uh, Chris kind of teed me up there with, you can uh, you underestimate what you can do in five years and overestimate what you can do in one. I've gone from negative net worth five years ago to uh, my wife and I were able to pay off all of our uh, consumer debt. Um, and we now have three rental properties, uh, in, uh, including one that we bought in the fall of this past year. Uh, we've currently invested in a, in a new uh, business franchise opportunity that's going to be starting this year that we're really excited about. Um, and, you know, we, we feel like we've got a plan that in, uh, you know, 10, 15 years, uh, we're on, on the way to where we want to be uh, in wealth building. And, you know, an, another thing that I'm, I'm very passionate about that, um, that Chris is as well, and we'll, we'll probably come up is, you know, when we talk about wealth building, it can feel like um, that, you know, it can, there can be this conception that we're just accumulating money for money's sake. Um, and, you know, we really believe that money is good for the good that it can do for others. So um, I've got two children that have cystic fibrosis. So I'm very passionate about that. And I've got dreams and goals of being able to support uh, research in that area, very active in my, uh, in my church community uh, and excited about the things that we could possibly do. Uh, and, and the ability to pass on a legacy to the next generation because of the decisions we make now. So I'm super excited uh, about this. Um, this, the, the Well Series 2.0, even just from the outline that we saw, um, it, it looks like they're going to take everything they talked about in 2020 and just double click on it and spend more time there. So I'm very, very, very excited um, and, uh, and happy to help in any way that I can. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Uh, it's going to be, um, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of coaching, a little bit. I've been a coach uh, now for five years. Um, I've been blessed to be what's called a bowl coach. So a couple things. Um, you're going to get uncomfortable because if you don't get uncomfortable, you're not going to grow. Uh, we all grow from the challenges we have, the things that we get wrong or things, mistakes we have and, and things. Uh, if, you, if you've been around me and seen me coach, I've told people, you know, uh, this is not about perfection. 
This is about progress. So even if just showing up here and just downloading the manual, uh, you're already winning. You're already getting better. Okay. So just take it one day at a time slowly. It's supposed to feel messy and out of control and chaotic and intense. Uh, you know, it's like people who work out with weights, if they don't work out with enough weight, their, their muscles don't grow. Okay. So, so we're just asking you to, to just stick with it. Just show up. It's progress, not perfection is what we're after here. Okay. Um, I, I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, the uh, uh, couple of things on, um, on, on housekeeping logistics. Okay. So to kind of also help everybody stay calm in this. Here's how the schedule is going to work, okay? Number one, there's no way we can go over the Friday podcast on Saturday morning. There's too much to do, right? So stop. Everybody take a deep breath. Today's call is going to be going over last Monday's material, day one's material, okay? Now, next Saturday, we're going to be going over yesterday, Friday's step two, and we're going to be going over Monday, step three material. So you guys will have almost a whole week to go through those two pieces, those two steps every week. Okay? Does that, everybody breathe a little bit better now? Right? Because there's a lot, right? <laughs> Automatically. So, so again, you know, uh, now we're happy to talk about the Friday call, uh, the questions or best practices, things of that nature. However, we want to make sure you know, like, look, you know, hey, we've all got families. We're busy. Thing dropped yesterday. We've got lives. So today's going to be probably on step one. Next Saturday will be on step two and step three. Also, anybody's welcome. Again, they can jump in at any point in time and catch up. Okay. There is zero judgment here. Okay. Uh, just have them come in. Okay. Now, the one thing we're not going to do is give you every answer in the book. We want you guys to give us information. This is not here to Help be the guide of you fill out the blanks for yourself. We want you guys to communicate with us, okay? Now, I've mentioned, number one, we're going to be sending out a recording of this every Monday for those not on Facebook. So again, bear with us. And then also we're going to be re-forwarding the emails of when the manuals drop, okay? And um, and also when the podcast drop. Uh Luke, uh, you want to show them like all the yep. all the goodies? Yeah, the just let me let me kind of uh, go through a couple of things. Again, you're going to be getting this stuff in multiple uh, multiple avenues. So email, if you are kind of on the fly and you want to find it, I'm going to share my screen here. All right, can everyone see my screen here? So on the Facebook on the Facebook group here, um, one one thing that you'll see us there. We are we're live right there. Um, as you are going through, through this, if you find things that are helpful or you have questions or you want to start a discussion or uh, anything along that line, feel free to come in here and put it in the discussion tab. We want this community to be um, really a community where we can go for answers if you need those, um, sharing best practices. Chris and I are going to be sharing uh, things, but don't feel hesitant to put something in the, in the discussion. Um, over here to the on the right hand side of this top bar here, you'll see the files. If you need to go in, if you want to download the spreadsheets, so every time these podcasts come out, anytime the workbooks are out, we uh, our team is going to be going in and putting those here under this files tab. So you're going to get them in your email. You're also going to get them. Uh, uh, you can get them from the Facebook group here as well. You'll see the post uh, there as well. If you are still struggling to get the uh, for any reason to get the podcast. All right, you can go to winmakegive.com slash podcast, subscribe there. You can subscribe on your uh, on any of the kind of streaming devices that you have. Uh, that is a way that you can get the podcast there down here towards the bottom right here, okay? Uh, and then if you have issues, uh, questions, concerns, um, I'm gonna stop sharing here. Um, Chris, do you wanna put CJ's uh, email in the chat? We're gonna put CJ's email in the chat for you. CJ is going to kind of be, uh, if you have any kind of troubleshooting that you need, any questions at all uh, about about anything, um, CJ's email will be there. Email CJ; she will get it to Chris and I, and we will we will make sure that uh, that we get your your questions answered. Okay. Also, Chris, anything you, you would put, add to that? Can you put the uh, Win May Give uh, podcast in the chat too? Yep. 
Um, and I've already learned because of the Facebook Live. Again, we're learning with you guys. So we're going through this, this with you. Please understand, we are going through this as well. We haven't been through this. We're going through this together. So we're all doing it together. And we're learning as we go. So for example, Luke, I've now learned that we need to put, make sure on Facebook Live, we put the links in there in the comments ah, there yeah. too. We'll get that done. We'll get better at this just like you guys. But that's the logistics of this, okay? Um, and then, uh, like I said, we'll we'll get more of the meat and material every Saturday, and then the recordings will be available, and, and just, you know, ask questions, okay? Ask questions um, logistically, okay? Uh, now, uh, what I've done, just to see you guys logistically, so I went and got a, a little uh, three-ring binder, and I printed out my stuff, okay? So I just printed it, and I put it in. I put it in one of these. Okay. It's paper. Um, I am not that techie. I know some people can download it and probably paid for Adobe and they can just do it on their computer. Uh, I've, I've got, I've got a, a book and paper and this thing called a pen. That's where I'm doing mine. Okay. Um, so uh, what I like to do, if it's okay, is we want to kind of go through the material from step one right now. Okay. And then ask you guys questions. Now, if you've been around me enough, I'm going to say, how you participate in here is how you participate everywhere. So I'm going to ask you guys questions and love to hear you guys come off mute and give us the answer. If you don't know how, don't know how to come off mute, the easiest and way to do it is just push the space bar. Um, by the way, I also have the um, Facebook Live group up. So that way, people on there want to put questions in there. We can uh, we can see those as well. And um, But uh, what I want to start with, if you uh, if you have your manuals and open them, um, is page four. Ben and uh, Chad and those guys, uh, they they have an interesting definition of wealth. Does anybody remember what, what they said was, was their definition of wealth? I want to come off mute and tell me what you think the definition their definition of wealth was? Turn everybody jump at once. It's something like being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it, who you want to do it with, something along those lines. That is exactly it. <laughs> That's it, seriously, that is exactly it. Yeah, the ability to do what you want, I mean, what I want, when I want, with who I want. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. And I'm already going to tell you, for Luke and me, the answer is no, we cannot yet. Is anybody on here right now, do you have the ability to do what you want, when you want, with who you want? Okay, we don't either. All right? And yet, that's okay. So we, we have some room for growth. Can we all agree? So now my next question on that is, all right. If you, if you could do what you want, when you want, with who you want, do you know what that would be? Because see, here's the thing. Your subconscious mind is going to go out and make a reality, everything happen that your conscious mind thinks of. And if we don't give it the reason, there's no need to go do it. It's amazing when I had to make enough money. Anybody said this statement? If I can just make enough money to pay my bills, imagine we find enough, we find a way to make just enough to pay our bills. If I could just have two hours off, we find that. See, so all this is saying is, let's define what you want to do, when you want to do it, and who with, and then we'll go find the how. Does that make sense? Is that helpful? Is that a good question for you guys? Chris, yeah, you've, you've talked with, uh, with me in the past about, you know, one of the things when you're talking about uh, what you want, uh, when you want, with who you want, it, it is the, the compelling vision of something in the future is what can pull you through the challenging times in, in the, in the, present right so um you know there have been several times over the last five years again i don't want to paint the uh the picture of you know oh man it was a straight line up the whole way for the past five years right it, um, and chris you know, chris almost did a spit take there at that right um one of the somebody's used an illustration before that i like that i think we could use in this it, you know sometimes wealth building can feel like you know doing a yo-yo going up the stairs right it's going up and down, but over time, it, it's you know, progressively making progress. And in the times where you have downtimes um, or 
you know, something happens and, and uh, you lose, you lose your job. A deal doesn't go through. Uh, an unexpected expense comes up, right? Your car blows up. You know, that was me this year, right? In those times where that gets difficult, if you've got that compelling vision, right? You know who you're doing it for. You know why you're doing it. You know where you're going. That can be what pulls you through the uh, the challenging times. So I just thought that's a, I think that's a, a great way to connect that into when we're talking about long-term goals. And that's what a lot of this course is going to be about. Um, just getting that clear on the vision. And that's going to be, you know, from, from my experience, that's going to be one of the hardest things to do is to get really clear on where you want to go. Yeah. And the more clear we get on it. And also for the high detail people here, you're allowed to change your mind. See, a lot of us think, well, you know, I have to make a decision. And then what if I don't like that decision? Well, you're allowed to change your mind. Start on a path, see how it feels, and then, and then change. It's okay to change. The key is just doing something. Okay. Uh, another question I'll ask is this. How many things would you try in your life if you didn't worry about looking bad or getting it wrong? If you knew in the end, you'd succeed. How many things would you try or do if you knew you could try them, check them out, and eventually you succeed at? The only people that lose are the people that quit in this. The only other thing I'll say is, and uh, this is a, <laughs> I laugh, uh, um, I mentioned this to uh, uh, Louie yesterday, uh, Luke. Um, my team likes to remind me of my, when I talk about things. And I say, has anybody here ever read the tortoise and the hare? So they know that parable, right? And uh, then I'd say, well, and who wins in the story? Who wins? The tortoise. Every time. Every time. You will grossly overestimate what you can do in one year and grossly underestimate what you can do in five. Luke went from a negative, negative net worth to almost half a million in five years. We went from no investment properties to 11. And just because of focus, okay? And, and it's been compelling, okay? It's been compelling. Is this helpful? Because this is, this is stuff that, because we're going to get into the meat of it, right? And But we got to have a foundation. If you don't know why and who you want to do things with, man, it doesn't make it, make it easy. And we're going to be showing up on Saturdays just, you know, coffee, just whatever. We're just here together to help grow. Um. Now, on page six, it says uh, why most people don't build wealth. Um, number one, the answer is was that they don't have enough for it to matter. Uh, if you've listened to uh, um, episode two, great. If you haven't, it's okay. Again, we're not really going to focus on that until next week. Um, you've heard a couple uh, statements before, like, you know, you die, you can die a, a miserable death by a thousand paper cuts. Well, you can also die a financial death by little teeny tiny leaks in a boat. Enough teeny tiny leaks in a boat will sink a boat. So when people say they don't have enough money for it to matter, we argue, no, $10 a week is enough to start. Any amount is enough to start. And then um, creating a financial plan is too complicated. On the other side of confusion, OK, on the other side of confusion is clarity. We can't skip confusion. We just can't. Um, it's in its uh, uh, it's just so, so critical. And then um, and I love on page six, this, the third statement says, if you don't understand that massive wealth can be created by doing small things consistently over time. Consistently over time. The minute I spent just two hours once a week. Every Monday from one to three, analyzing five investment properties, just doing that consistently led me to being able to buy properties. Now, let me briefly give you the rest of that story. The first nine months were insanely confusing and uncomfortable. Amy and I could not figure out what our buy box was, what we wanted to buy because of all the different parameters, all the things we had to learn. What cash flowed, what appreciated, what our definition was ca of cash flow, what was our definition of appreciation, what was our definition of a house we felt comfortable buying. I mean, it led to so many more questions, not answers at first. And yet then it got really, really quick. Oh, and by the way, on that note, on the Facebook page, okay, in the community, at the bottom of it, 
I recorded uh, a video on how to analyze an investment property. Some of you were on that call. I put it on there with the spreadsheet. So you, again, we're going to keep putting anything of value in here. We can at the very bottom. Uh, we recorded a call. It's a free spreadsheet on how to analyze investment property. That's the spreadsheet I was using every week for five properties. But it took me nine months, nine months to make our first offer. Okay. So, but it was just that one consistent change. And for you, maybe it's this class. We don't know. Just miss this, just learning. But it's, you're going to get confusion. Just keep going, please, please. And I apologize if I'm cheerleading too much. Just tell me to stop. <laughs> okay, page seven, six steps to becoming a wealth builder. I'm not going to read all six. What we'd love is interaction is, okay, of these six, anybody have any ahas or any ones that hit them between the eyes on, wow, that one, that one surprised me or that one meant a lot to me or that one scares me, anything like that. Love to hear from you guys. For me, it was investing to reduce taxes. I never thought of those two going together. Yeah, great one. So you might want to write this down. There's a great book called Tax-Free Wealth by Tom Wheelwright. It's called Tax-Free Wealth. Example, Amy, my wife and I, we got really upset. It didn't seem to matter which accountant we used, we always seemed to pay 25% in taxes. I mean, we went with the big, huge firms, we went with the local person, Right, we did everything. We'd always pay 25% in taxes. We read Tax Free Wealth by Tom Wheelwright. Magically, last year, my accountant knocked off $40,000 in taxes because of our properties that we bought. $40,000 because I bought a house in Reedsville. And I did a thing called Burr in it. It was like $40,000 in taxes savings. It was like, what? Had no idea. So, Again, probably a good book to read, but yes, you get rewarded in this country for investing in housing, investing in energy, and investing in technology. This government is in business with us, and they reward us for investing in those things. Uh, Mary, you have your hand raised. Did you have one? Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, another one. Anybody else on steps one through six? Any other ahas around those? Or yeah, five? for me, Chris, uh, this is Lauren. It was to diversify and protect wealth because I've never believed in putting all my eggs in one basket. So having you know things diversified into different areas that to me is important. Yeah, amen. We, we agree. Speed agree. Speed agree. And we're going to do that, right? We're going to do that. Like Luke has some money in the stock market. I have some money in the stock market. I have this much in cryptocurrency, having fun watching it. I feel like I'm at Vegas with my money in cryptocurrency. It's just absolutely hysterical seeing what that stuff does. Uh, I have a little, you know, just a little. Uh, um, thank you. Uh, anybody else? Any other ahas on the six steps or any challenges? Thanks, Amy. All right. If we're good with that one, I'm going to move on. Okay. Uh, page eight. Does anybody believe number one or anybody not believe number one? Mm -hmm. All right, let me ask a different question. Does anybody here know what the rule of 72 is? Ooh, okay. So uh, my, my wife, I love it. So she, as a coach, I always talk about these hooey-dooey things, right? These subconscious things, these mindset things, right? So she's always like, I need concrete examples, Chris. I need tangible examples, right? So here's one. How do you know that increments of wealth can grow over time and be extraordinary? Okay, well, I'm going to give you the rule of 72. Okay, so the average stock market goes up on average, up and down all, over time, okay, over time at about 7%. Right? If you stay in it forever, 
okay? If you grab your calculators, all right? Grab a calculator, grab your phone, whatever, okay? And you, uh, and you go in and you divide, okay? 72 by seven, okay? You're gonna get a number. Somebody do that for me while I'm looking at my calculator. All right, somebody give me an answer. What, how long? So that means the rule of 72 tells you that if you get a 7% return on your money, when you invest your money, it's going to take 10 years for you to double your money. Okay, double your money. Now, watch this. So that's if you put it in the stock market, you leave it alone. Yes, there are going to be years when it goes down three or four or 5%, right? 6%. There's going to be years that it goes up. Okay, a lot. But it's on average, time over time, your money is going to double every 10 years. Now, with real estate, okay, when we add in the fact that the home is appreciating every year on average, the tenant is paying down the debt, and we're getting cash flow. So we have three different ways that our money is, in essence, making money for us, all right? We, ha we don't have a single property that we're not getting at least a 20% year-over-year annualized return in our money. Okay, so now if you go and divide 72, all right, by 20, how many years does it take to double my money? Somebody say it. Don't let Lou give me the answer. I want, I want you guys to press the space bar, come off you, put it in the chat. Come on, help me out. Three and a half? Yeah, three and a half years. Who here doesn't want to want to double your money in three and a half years? Now, now realize when you double your money in three and a half years, now that money can double in three and a half years. Now that money can double in three and a half years. Do you see how this starts to snowball the other direction? Now, and I said, that's an average return. All right. Again, limited beliefs. We did a Burr property, which is buy, buy a property, renovate it, rent it out, refinance it. Well, in six months, we put our money into a property. After six months, we took all our money back, all of it. And we were still making $350 a month of income. Now, that's a that's a, over 3,000 times return on my investment because we have no money in the property after six months. And that's just another example. Oh, and by the way, that's the property that got us the tax return savings of $40,000, by the way. So when we look at this, this is true. Whether you believe it or not, this is true. This is reality, okay? Um, and um, yeah, and the bottom one says, it, you know, it provides the secret and income for all of us to ensure life changes. One of my big things on this is what happens if I get sick? None of the men in my, in my family made it past 56. I'm 54 now. So I have no illusions that, you know, I didn't win the gene pool lottery, okay? The men in my family die young. Now, I have made changes to my life and my lifestyle to where, I, you know, I'm trusting that's not going to be the case. And I don't think it will be um, based on health. Uh, however, we don't know what's around the corner. We don't know when another pandemic or a shift in the market or uh, the mar stock market crashes. I I've got so many people that I love and dear that want to retire right now because the past year in the stock market went down 20%. They're like, I can't do it yet. I don't want to be that. I don't want any of you to be that, right? Um, so Lauren said it, diversifying and having a bunch of different ways. So you have some real estate. We're going to have some stocks. We're going to have businesses. We're going to have each other. And that way, it doesn't matter what it does. We've got this uh, you know, foundation. Okay, foundation. Um, all right, page 10. Has anybody actually reflected on how much you want to have in savings, how much income you want per year, and how much retirement, and, and we don't use the word retirement, we call it financial freedom. Another illusion that Amy and I had to get our, our heads around was, like, can you guys, anybody who knows me, imagine me sitting on a front porch just chilling out ever, right? So, so, so the thought of retirement in my mind was always like, well, you just sit around and just piddle around and just kind of do nothing, right? No, no. Financial freedom 
It means I can do what I want with who I want when I want. Now that that's worth doing. So I don't we don't use the word retirement in our ha household. It's just financial freedom. Okay, but my financial freedom number is pretty large. I got some stuff I want to do. I got places I want to go. I got people want to see. You know, uh, quite frankly, have you done these things? Have you asked these questions? Have you, been, have you been honest with yourself about how much you want in savings? Luke has a different savings safety net number than I do. Lauren has a different one than I do. Melissa has a different one than I do. Or me and Amy, we do, right? Um, there's no wrong answer. Our savings number is based on how many months currently could we not work and still be okay? So, for example, when the pandemic hit and they told us we were not essential, we were not essential workers, I didn't freak out. I didn't. I was able to stay calm. I was not happy. I didn't freak out about that because, like, no, we we prepared for this. They give the stats in uh, in the wealth series, and it's a scary number. Most Americans, I think it's over two thirds of Americans, could not handle a four hundred dollar accidental bill. Right. That's not even a month of, of savings. So savings generally for us is somewhere between three to six months. If you couldn't work, something happened. You uh, Luke had a, a child, you know, get born with, with CF. He had to go be at a hospital. And he could, thankfully. I'm just I don't even want to think about the fact that if he had to worry about eating and not being able to be fully present with his wife and, you know, a child, you know. So, so how much, what's your safety net number? You know that number, not us. Is it three months? Is it six months? Is it a year? Luke, isn't yours like a year now? Like, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hovering between nine and 12 months. Yeah. I'm getting better. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but the goal also is to have that financial freedom number be the passive income number to where you don't even need to worry about savings because it's coming in no matter what. But until then, that's why it's first, is how much do you need to save should something happen or an oops happen? And then how much income do you need to be able to have just at least this much going towards savings and this much going towards investing? Hey, Chris, maybe let me let me step in here just a second Please. and um, let everybody off the hook. So the first time I did this in 2020, um, I did all the calculations. I, I kind of did the exercise, got down to my number, then restarted because I'm like, surely that number can't be right. That number is way too high. And that had freaked me out. Okay. So if you do, if you do start doing this and you start, you know, getting these numbers together about what you need and the number seems really scary, welcome to the game. That's another, that's another criticism. Right. Um, and I had somebody text me this morning who was kind of working on the, the exercise from yesterday's episode. And they said, man, I'm working on this exercise. It's kind of stressing me out a little bit. And, uh, you know, my response to, to them was, um, Better to be a little stressed now and know where you're at than to be, you know, in bliss and have no idea, right? And sometimes just putting down what you want on paper is going to be scary, right? Because you might realize, oh, man, what I thought I needed and what I really need are a lot different. Either way, it could be, man, I thought I needed way more and I could be financially free a lot quicker than I thought. Or it could be, hey, I'm, I thought I needed this, but I actually need three, four, five X that to be able to, to be able to make, uh, make what I want. And then this is a great time. You know, I, I, we're going to get to this later in the series. Um, but while you're kind of in this thinking down the road headspace, this is a great time to, to dream a little bit about, um, what kind of, not only how much money you need, but what kind of life do you want to have? What kind of impact do you want to leave? What kind of, um, you know, charitable giving or what, what kind of, you know, impact do you want to leave in your sphere, right? All of us have, um, by the fact that you're on this call and, and taking this, uh, the wealth series means that you want to use wealth to leave an impact. So let yourself dream a little bit on here and have some fun. Like let yourself add, um, a little more to this, to these numbers and let that kind of positive impact scare you a little bit, but also get you excited. Um, I think this is a great time to do that. We're going to talk about that towards the end of the series, if I remember correctly, but I just thought that's a really good time to do it now while you're in that headspace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, this is not to be scary. It, it looks scary. I, I'll repeat. You are no more than five years from wherever you want to be. 
and we've just seen it too many times. Kira, did you raise your hand? Do you have something? Can you guys just share a little bit about how you're coming up with these numbers? Because I think something for me personally is like when you when I get asked these questions, it's just like, I mean, I can come up with a number, but if there's no or and if there's no reason behind how I came up with that number, then it doesn't, it just feels like a I, I don't know. Is that makes does that question make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah absolutely. To get yeah. my retirement number when I'm when these things are things I've to some extent, if I'm being honest, been avoidant of. So it's like, oh, throw a number out and hmm. yeah. Would you want? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I think there's going to be a calculator. I believe it comes out in this series for a retirement calculator that's coming down the road, which is really helpful. Um, what what I've done um, and the way it kind of. Uh, my wife and I, when we were talking about retirement, we took our expenses. This is why the, the doing the exercise from uh, the second podcast is so important to get clarity over what are your expenses that you need now, right? Um, I've taken those, right? Then thought about, okay, well, when ideally would I desire to be financially free? Is it 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now? What is that? Um, so I took the number of my necessary expenses. I let myself dream a little bit about what I want, wanted life to look like in the 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Okay. And thought, okay, what does that cost to do that? To take the kind of trips we want to take, to give the kind of money to charity I want to give, all those things. Um, and then one of the things that I think was most helpful for me was saying, okay, um, let's take that number and use 3% appreciation, 2 to 4% appreciation right, over the next 10 to 15, 20 years, however long that is. And that kind of gives me the, the number at that point, right? So you can reverse engineer it and think like, well, okay, at, you know, 55, 60, I'll need $225,000 a year in income from all of my investments. And you can reverse engineer it that way. And that can kind of help you break down steps to to what you want to get for now. And then one of the really cool things that, that um, uh, again, the, the retirement calculator that will come out, I can actually drop that in the Facebook group. I can give a little head start there, um, is it allows you to take, so for example, the three rental properties that I own, I have the current rents on them now. And then I've used the appreciation for, okay, if, if rents appreciate 2% year over year for the next 20 years, here's what those will be rented at, which means here's what my yearly income, when those properties are paid off, here's the yearly income coming from those properties, right? And that has that has let me know, okay, I'm 15% towards that number based on these three properties I have if I buy and hold them. Um, so I don't know if that, that helps, but it's clarity over your current, your necessary expenses. Um, some of those necessary expenses for us, like for example, um, I've got a six-year-old that I don't know how he eats as much as he eats. Like it's incredible. I don't know if any of you else uh, would agree with that. But you know, some of my expenses may go down when I don't have children in the house anymore, right? Um, so, and, and, and vice versa, some of them may go up, some of them may go down. So taking that, getting some clarity over that, um, and then using that calculator, I think was really helpful. Chris, you got anything you'd add to that? Yeah. So a couple of things here. So number one, remember I said earlier, I said, you know, you're allowed to change your mind. So you are guessing right now what I, what we're looking forward to is you're going to put in numbers, you're going to put numbers down right now. And then eight weeks from now, we're going to look back at this number and go, wow, look how different it is now. Right, because you are guessing. Now, um, it's okay, and that's okay. And you don't have the why to it, right? Again, if you could do what you want, when you want, with who you want, what's that cost? So a uh, year and a half ago, maybe, one of the ways Amy and I got going on this was after taking the first well series, we put big, uh, big, huge posts up on the board because I looked at her and I said, look, I, at that time I was like 52 years old. I only have so many vacations left on this earth. Let's be honest, right? Where do I want to go? And what, what do those vacations cost? So we started writing down like Costa Rica, Hawaii, Europe, and all these things. And we started looking up what those things cost. And then we started looking up, well, when are the best times of year to go? When my son's nine, when is the good time for him? Like right now, imagine putting a nine-year-old on a plane to, to Japan wouldn't be fun, right? So when do I want to do that? When do we want to do that with him? What are vacations we're going to do with him without him? We've also only got nine years of him left in the house. 
So we started do, like doing, getting, again, confusion first. And all of a sudden you start putting all these things up on the board and you go, well, what are the top 20, 25 places we want to go? Which by the way, wasn't comfortable because we had a list of 40, 45 places. And it'd be wonderful if I go on two to two a year, okay? But I also know you hit your 80s and 90s, are you going to want to travel that much? Can you travel that much? Can you physically do it? Um, and that helped kind of redefine some of these things, okay? Um, and um, and it wasn't comfortable, and yet it, it helped. So for right now, you're right. You're guessing a little bit. You are. Um, but just think about who you want to, what you want to do, who you want to do with, and, and when you want to do it. What's that going to cost on top of your everyday expenses? And then we got to figure out, okay, how do we have enough investments bringing in that, if not more, right? And it's a starting point. It's just a starting point. Um, and, uh, you know, so so you are guessing some, and, and that's okay. It's a start, right? It's just a start. So don't- really Chris, don't that, that exercise that you, you were just saying, I think is super helpful. My wife and I did that. Um, we didn't know that you did that, but we did that as well. And the way we did it was we took everybody in our family. So uh, for my wife and I, it's, that's me, my wife, um, and, my, and our three kids. And we kind of said, okay, well, here's how we made a chart on the left-hand side going down was we're now in 2023. And then we did kind of two year increments down, right? Mm -hmm. So what it, what it did for us was it gave us some clarity on, you know, these might be the prime vacation years, right? So like everybody keeps telling me, I'm gonna have to go to Disney World. And I'm like, well, if I'm gonna go to Disney World, I wanna go to Disney World when everybody can walk and I'm not lugging around, you know, a kid on my back or whatever. Um, and I'll kind of give you, let me see if I can get this to show up. Cause again, it was super, super helpful, but you know, just taking a journal and let me unblur my background so that you guys can see this. Um, let's see how, so literally just, Everybody in my family across the top, years down the side, and then what everybody's ages would be through there. And then what that was able to, to let me know is, you know, um, our best vacation years are going to be 2028 to 2034, right? So if I'm planning on some, some prime vacations, that's the years that I want to do it, you know? 2041, potentially, if everybody leaves the house at 18, that might be when I'm an empty nester. So I might have goals for that. You know that empty nester season that I want to that I want to be in. Um, so yeah, I think that's a super helpful, and, and that will kind of help you get even if you're having a hard time thinking that far. Like, so I love my wife; she's uh, she's great at the day to day kind of practical things. The running joke in our house is that um, if I was in charge, we would not do. Uh, we would have lots of five year plans, but the bills wouldn't get paid. And if my wife was uh, running the house. Everything on a day-to-day -day basis would get done, but we'd have no idea where we're going in five years. So we have that great symbiotic relationship like that. Um, so if you're if you're having a hard time thinking down that line, that's a super helpful exercise. Even if you're just thinking, okay, here's how old I'm going to be at these ages, and here's what I would want to do in those ages, um, is super super helpful. Now, all right, we've been talking a lot, guys. What are y'all hearing? What are you getting? Where are you feeling? You having stress? Are you okay? Where are we at? Talk to us because on page 11, it's like, hey, what are your takeaways? What are your ahas? Like, what have you gotten out so far? Okay. Like, talk to us, please, a little bit. Help us. What are you hearing? I think one of my biggest takeaways was that it's okay to change your mind um, as we go through this journey. And, um, it's okay to get out of your comfort zone and take steps toward things that you want to achieve. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa said massive wealth yeah, equals small changes. Yes. I mean, incremental changes will get you there. Yes. Love it. Chris, that always, that, that always reminds me of, we had a, we had a, a guy that worked with us um, a couple of years ago, sat down to look at his finances and realized he was going every morning to Starbucks. Yeah. to get a small black iced coffee. And so we sat down and said, well, how much does that small black coffee cost? And I can't remember exactly how much it cost that time at that time. It was like 350. It's like, it's like 350. 350. Yeah. So, so Chris was like, okay, well, how much is that a year? And it was something absurd if you do it five days a week. And then you got to ask the question is, is that worth the investment? And a man started making his coffee at home. <laughs> so 
you're, you're right. Like it can be those little, those little small incremental things can be super, uh, super impactful long term. Yeah, it was. It was. He purchased um, a it home was, shortly right after that year, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did because he was spending eight hundred seventy-five dollars a year without thinking. And I just said, simply said, "Look, is that cup of coffee worth eight hundred seventy-five bucks?" That's all I'm asking. Like, if, it, if the answer is yes, great. If not, what would you do that eight seventy-five? And he was like, "No." I was like, "Well, that's that's what you're spending, right? It's just a, a little tiny thing." Yeah, he did. He bought a home next year. He did. You're right, Melissa. Right. And it's just little things like that. Right. So they're all of a sudden that's that money. Now, where would that go? Right. Um, all right. The. Um, any other questions or uh, ahas on step one? Uh, again, it's our first time doing this. We want to make sure we, we value y'all's time because Luke and I, are, we, we love this stuff. So we'll do it all day, but we want to keep y'all's time. And then I want to talk about two uh, and three and, and logistics uh, going next week. But any other questions or ahas regarding session one, step one? I did miss the number page six, um, why people, most people don't build wealth. Um, they don't have enough what? Um, they don't money. have enough money for it to matter. Okay, and then creating a what? Blank is plan. Ah, gotcha, thank you. Yeah, and they don't understand, uh, what they don't understand is massive wealth can be created by doing small things consistently over time. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And again, we are we didn't go over, we're, our goal is not to like give you guys all the answers to these. Uh, ideally, it's you guys come with, with questions, uh, but that's great. Anybody else have any questions or ahas on, on part one? No ones? Okay. So what's going to happen next Saturday at nine is we're going to be talking about step two and uh, step three. Step three will come out on Monday. So we always have a week of bandwidth to work through things. If you've already listened to or looked at step two, it looks fairly intense. But this is where the reality checks in. Reality check sets in. We're going to ask you sincerely. Let it be scary. It's okay. This is what things cost. And things are not going to get cheaper. Okay? With awareness, with awareness, then you get control. Even if you don't like it, once you're aware of where you're at, you get control. Okay? Um, yeah, so the quiz, thank you, Tara, is the quiz is at the end of, of week eight, and the quiz is always going to be about, and we they asked us not to give you the answer to the question on page 12, okay? There's always the, the homework question like that. that way. So at the end of the quiz, okay? Uh, so like, for example, on step two, they've got a question there and you guys are supposed to go and listen. That way they know you listen to it and the quiz will be at the end of the eight weeks, okay? So for example, on page 12 of the second step, it's got the Benjamin Franklin said question. That's going to be the quiz question, okay? And they asked us specifically not to go over the quiz questions so that everybody can be frank and honest about doing the work. Great question. Thank you for asking. Um, so step two is you're going to be documenting a lot of your finances, okay? Now, that can be for a high, for a non-detailed person, okay? This is like, the worst thing in the world, okay? Thank God I have Amy in my life and she does it. Um, and she loves this stuff. Thank you. I love I love, I love admin people and, and those minds. I love them with all my heart. I love my accountant because uh, the thought of that stuff drives me nuts. Now, here's how a non-detailed person does these things, okay? Let me give you that answer. So number one is um, uh, I don't go by what the bank statements say I go into my bank state bank account and I pick the dates I want to pull from. You can actually say January 1st through January 31st. Because isn't it amazing how banks always do statements like the 7th and the 10th of the month, right? So it's never an actual month, right? Same with the credit cards. Like people, can't you just do the 1st and 31st? The answer is no. <laughs> so, um, so what I suggest you do is print, print out at least uh, join... Uh, print three months of credit card statements, three months of bank statements, so that you catch most everything. 
Okay, but if your bank has the ability for you to pull the first through the 31st, and that way you can at least see all your, the total number of debits and total number of credits each month, you can see that in five minutes. So at least if you're not, because it's gonna ask you to go down, what do you spend on groceries? What do you spend on this? What do you spend on that? If you can at least do all that detail work, at least know what you're spending every month and what you're what you're putting in the bank every month. Like just like let's go slow. Like, that's better than not. And one of the big ahas is am I spending more than I'm making? Right? I mean, first one. Does that make sense? Okay. Chris, I, and let me share how uh, a high detail yeah, person. Uh, goes yes, through it please. is um, one of the things that was super helpful. I've already done this. Um, I was doing this last night um, is I've got, I do the printouts and I've got the, I've got the highlighters, you know, I'm a, I'm a rule follower, very trainable. Um, I've got the highlighters. I'm doing the whole thing. I've also got a pin and I have a, what is this asterisk? Right? So I've already, um, I'm about a third of the way through our bank statements last night already found one um, like, like best buy reoccurring charge. I'm assuming it's for like tech support, had no idea about. I had um, a uh, antivirus software on a computer I no longer own that was still about to renew that I caught. So you're gonna find stuff. And if, if you're like me, um, you're gonna have some what is this things. So I've been going through, I've got the highlighters, I'm doing the calculations. And then I'm also, there's going to be stuff, at least for me, that I found that I'm like, I have no idea what this is, um, which is a great way to get that stuff canceled <laughs> if you if you don't look for it. I agree with the um, the, the two to three months. And then also they, they mentioned in the podcast, that there are some things, you know, that do get billed every six months or, you know, like for us, our Amazon Prime renews every January. So, um, you know, it's whatever, 15 bucks a month, um, but it all comes out in January. So I wouldn't have seen that uh, if I was just looking at the last statements as well. Yeah. So again, uh, for those who are perfectionists, done is better than perfect. Okay. This is not about perfection. Perfection is the enemy of progress. Okay. The more you do it, the faster you'll get at it, the better you'll get at it. Okay. Um, and you're going to, it's not, it, it'll never be perfect. Done is better than perfect. Having something is a start. So don't let the need for perfection stop you from just doing something. So somewhere between just at least knowing all the debits and all the credits and every single detail, right, is a win, okay? It's just getting a picture of where you're financially at right now. And, they, and the other, one of the biggest things that we're gonna be talking about next week is what's a required expense? right? Versus what is an optional expense. And when you listen to step two, Ben's had a really great definition. It's going to help me in the future with other people describing it is if you are in an emergency situation, you still have to pay for it. So for example, I don't have to buy new clothes in an emergency situation, right? I don't have to buy new clothes. I can wear the same clothes. My son can wear the same sneakers an extra two weeks, a month, two months, three months, right? We can get hand-me-downs. I mean, if I had to, right? So an absolute, I have to have this expense. And, you know, so, you know, Amazon Prime is not a have-to expense. That's an optional expense. So this also helps you get clarity on what's really, really has to happen and what's optional. Because remember, that's, we're not saying don't do it. Just know, well, if I wasn't using that there, could it be doing something else with it? That's all, that's all you want to kind of figure out. Right, it, it, it's yours. There's zero judgment, but you do want to really get clarity on what do I actually have to have to live on. I'm gonna tell a story on Luke. When uh, he finally got out of debt, he didn't want to take the win. He just he just upped his expenses to include all the savings he wanted to do. And I was like, whoa, 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 uh, -uh. you busted your butt last year. Your expenses went down. Went down. I want to see that number be less, not more, because he raised it. Because now he had a debt, he wanted to save a bunch more. I said, no, no, that's an optional business plan. I want the, I want you to take the win for lowering your expenses plan. You remember that, Luke? I do. I came in and said, what's the number you have to have? And I said it. He said, that's wrong. I said, you haven't even heard, you haven't even seen the plan yet. He's like, but I know it's wrong because it's more than last year. So. 
right? Because that's what we do ourselves. We just keep raising the bar on our optional things and we got to get clarity on what, what we have to have and every dollar above that becomes a choice, right? I mean, this is how we get out of the rat race. Okay. And you can, you can take this as an opportunity with those optional expenses to say like, do I really need this? Like, do I really want, or, or do I even really want it? Not do I need it. Do I really want it? You know, like, do I really even watch episodes of TV on Hulu anymore, but I'm still paying this 10 bucks a month for Hulu, whatever. So uh, that's another thing you can do during this time too. Yeah. I mean, again, the, the goal isn't living on more money. The goal is living on your terms of you just defining where, where those little bits go, okay? Um, so, so next week, our goal is to, to, again, show up no matter what, and it's about done, not perfect. Have as, as good an idea as you can of what your have-to expenses are, what your option expenses are. And then later here, we'll be talking about dreams. We'll be adding in dreams, okay? You get to go look at the car and the vacations and see what those what those cost, and we get to add those in there. Again, why are we doing all this, right? Is to live the life that we want to live, okay? But right now, we've got to just kind of get an idea on what we really need to have and what, what we're spending that's really optional that we think we have to have, okay? It's just about living on our terms, and, and, and it's going to get messy, and that's okay, right? I promise, we can, we can look at you and promise that past uncomfortability is clarity, past the breakdown will be a breakthrough, okay? Okay, sincerely, that's, that's what we can say. Um, all right, any other questions? Any other ahas, anything? We've already gone uh, you know, longer than an hour, but again, we'll stay on, do whatever. But anything else, any other questions? You know step two, you know how to sign up for the podcast. We're gonna be two and three next Saturday, same bat time, same bat chasing. Oh, somebody asked, can I still invite people? Oh my gosh, please. Well, you can invite people up to week seven, week seven, week eight. Anybody is welcome anytime, all the time. There is no wrong answer here. They can jump in, they can catch up, or they can jump in midstream. There, every week, the goal is there's something here no matter what on its own, okay? So anybody's welcome all the time, please. Uh, any questions or ahas before we get you guys out of here on this beautiful Saturday morning? Yeah, two podcasts a week. Yes. One's on Monday, one's on Friday. We don't know why, but that's the way Ben's got them dropping. So, so we're always going to do Friday and the, and the following Monday. So next Saturday, we will do yesterday's and Monday's. So we'll be doing session two and session three next Saturday. Okay. And again, won't be as much on logistics and getting the set up. It'll be more just like, let's get down to it and get, get into the material and ahas and questions. Okay. All right. Any other questions, ahas, logistics, or just what'd you get? I'm watching the group chat. All right. Now, when I hear silence, it makes me wonder like, oh gosh, did we lose them? Make me feel better a little bit. Make me feel a little good. Like, what'd y'all do? Give me a couple of ahas. For me, it was when uh, Luke did the ages. My boys are 20 and 16, but I'm thinking, hmm, when do I need to be thinking about marriages and maybe grandbabies? And, mm -hmm. you know, where will I be at that point? Love it, KJ. Great. Ooh, good one. All right, one more. How about one more? I see my wife giggling and smiling there. <laughs> grandbabies, uh-oh. <laughs> exclamation point on grandbabies. He's nine, Amy. He's nine. Thank you. I'm, still, I'm still in. I'm still in the. Uh, my my daughter's never getting married phase. So I know I'll get out of that at some point, but uh, yeah. that's where I'm at. Yes, and it's never the place to start, no matter what age you are. Love it. So true. So so true. Um, all right. Well, Luke and I are going to hang around for a few minutes. We will answer any questions you have, if the best I can. Next Saturday, we're doing session two and session three. We are going to email a recording of this to everybody on Monday. Regardless, it's also it, it's on the Facebook uh, live group. Um, so you can always go back if you're on Facebook in there and get it. Don't forget the files tab also has all the manuals if you're not getting the emails. And uh, just thank you guys all for going on the journey with us. Sincerely, thank you all so much for being here.
and uh, doing this together. We really, really sincerely appreciate it and uh, are honored that you guys will do this with us. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yep. Thank have you. a great Saturday. We'll stick around and ask you any questions if you have them. I am going to stop the Facebook page, though. Yeah. Chris, can you go over that, the words for Burr?